Syncing local files is such an essential thing to do just because sometimes you just don't know if something's going to break. For instance, I was in Steam just the other day playing one of my favorite games that just came out by the name of Dwarf Fortress. Amazing game, absolutely love it, but it does not have a cloud sync. So a lot of times I'll have my Steam Deck, I'll have this PC, I'll have an inside PC if I'm like editing or something, and then I might have a laptop floating around and I'm relying on Cloud Sync to work from Steam, and some games just don't set it up. So I need to do this sync back and forth. And there's a lot of different other things that you might need, like maybe a localized Dropbox. Instead of using a cloud service for that type of thing, that can cause security problems, all sorts of things. You can actually just do a local sync and keep all your files local, especially if that's all your clients need to be is just all right there in that network and you don't want to sync outside the network or maybe you do so i'm going to talk about sync thing in this video everyone's heard sync thing oftentimes they leave it on the stock default configurations and i'm just sitting here shaking my head especially if you're just doing needing a local sync so that's why i use it uh, but the configuration is actually pretty simple. I'm going to show a couple different configurations today. Let's get on uh, the Windows desktop, and we're going to show sync thing over here. So to start out with, we have uh, an article just so you can copy paste things. There's a couple tools you can use in combination with sync thing just to make your life a little easier. Sync thing dash GTK is something I've always used for the Linux users out there. I'd say, hey, use GTK. It's great. But lately, I've actually been using something a little bit newer uh, called Tracer or Sync Tracer. I'm probably saying that wrong, but let's just install that and start configuring it because it's pretty slick as well. Let's so we'll close this and pull up Sync Tracer. And the initial configuration is going to look something like this. We're going to just say allow access to private networks only. Uh, do you want to allow anonymous usage? I'm going to say treat this more like a secure environment, so I'm going to say no to that. Uh, do you want to set a username and password? Most people do. If you're sharing folders from that computer, definitely set this up. If not, it's not too big of a deal as people will have to have access to your local network. And in that case, you probably have bigger problems than what you're syncing over here. But I'll leave that up to you. We'll hit OK. Let's go full screen. This is the default folder. We're just actually going to blow this out. We're just going to say, you know what? I don't need this folder. Remove it. I'm not sharing anything from this computer. But I do want all these Dwarf Fortress files or save files located somewhere where I can just get to it at all times. So I have a little NAS box back there that has sync thing running. Now, it could also be a Linux box or a computer that just is usually always on. That's usually where you want to share the sync. And that way, that is constantly being synced back and forth from any of the uh, systems that are left on. So leave whatever systems left on the most. Or if you have a 24-7 uh, NAS box like I do, you just want to put it on there. And that's going to be what's going to be serving the files. So I'm going to actually log into my NAS box with that sync thing. And here we go. This is the folder that I have. It's just sitting in this NAS thing. It's not even the, the location's not even important, but there's a couple things I usually set up here. You can see I currently have four different systems or three different systems located or connected to this one. Right now, there's my main PC inside that's connected up. You have a Studio Arch PC that's out here. That's currently, I, I think I wiped this out, uh, but I, I can reconnect it. And then we have the Steam Deck. So if I turn that on, it'll actually show up to date. I'm going to actually click that on real fast. And you can see that pulled in right here. The cool thing is it actually tells you when the sync thing client's running. So if something's running, like if the Studio Arch PC is currently disconnected, I know that that sync thing is not being launched on startup. So I probably should go troubleshoot that if I wanted to make sure that's working. But I'm just going to shut down my Steam Deck. You'll see it pop off as I talk about some other things this uh, folder sync does. Right here, there's, there's the add folder button. Uh, you would just add one folder, usually games, and then sync things to it from your clients. I like to just do it that way. When you click add folder, you just 
put a label and then the folder path. Uh, and then it can be uh, aligned to whatever it is in that system. So what I usually do uh, for games, like specific games like Dwarf Fortress, I made symbolic links in all the operating systems to just push to that one folder so I'm not sinking a whole bunch of garbage. I just want to grab that one folder. And then if someone, like let's say, logs into my sync thing, it's not going to be that really big of a deal because they're just going to be able to sync my game saves, which I don't really care about. And one other advantage here too is the versioning that you get now like dropbox and those types of things have versioning but you can really choose uh get really granular with your versioning here so it just depends on how uh, paranoid you are but if you go into file versioning you can have simple versioning trash can versioning i recommend probably simple for most users this is just a very simple hey this file changed i'm going to keep a backup of it i'm going to keep five versions of it uh, and then usually there's a cleanup interval of, you know, where, wherever, or you set, hey, clean it out after 120 days. So if a backup's more than 120 days old, just remove it. Uh, and that's simple file versioning. If you really want to get aggressive and you're really scared of someone messing things up or you have a lot of sync clients, you might even go to staggered file versioning if it's more important documents. Uh, or even pushing it off to another system. Either way, uh, it's a really neat versioning tool that I wanted to kind of go over real fast just to let you know that option's there. But with that said, let's just sync up this new system that we started with over here, and we're going to just add uh, this device. Now, right now, its identifier is EGFKLG, and you can see these listeners. Since we want this to be fast and we don't want it to go out to the internet, a couple minor settings I like to do is just come into settings, connections, and then I usually disable global discovery and enable relaying. Those two things are the big ones to make sure you just stay within your local network. With those done, you can see the listeners drop to two and the discovery drops to two. All that's really good. We can still discover it on the local network, but if we were outside my network and you typed in my identifier, it's not gonna find it. So let's come back to our other system, our main drive. Let's add a remote to drive. And you can see, hey, it already found EGF KLG4. Great, save. And it just automatically puts this in and we'll see what that is once we come back to our system. It says, hey, this wants to connect. Yes, add the device. What are we going to call this? Synology. Save. And then it says, hey, I'm Win10VM, and it's connecting to the Synology. Now, back on our other server device, you can say it's connected. It's unused right now. We want to share the games folder to it. So what we'll do is just hit Edit, Sharing, and then we just say, hey, yeah, toss it over to Win10VM, please. Save. So from the server, we go back to our client. It says it wants to add this folder. Yeah. Add it, please. Where is it going to add it? It's going to put this whole sync into user subscribed games. Save. And then it goes and syncs it. Now, this is about 300 megs. And you'll see it's able to chew through this at a pretty good clip. If you don't need to get out to the internet and do relaying and, and sync outside your network, always do these settings. Because if you don't, this is going to be a lot slower. And I do mean a lot slower. Even with regular LAN travel, this can be quite a bit slower. So that's one thing I caution you with. Now, it's probably a little bit slower because this is, I think, Wi-Fi. But it's still not bad for it being about a third of a gig. Takes a couple, what, maybe 10, 20 seconds to sync over. And then subsequent saves will only be a differential sync. So it means it just grabs whatever changed. So it's not having to sync all that whole thing on the first go. And if we pull up on the client here, you can see our games folder under our user folder where we put it. And we can see our backups and Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress save. And so all this needs to be synced over to our save folder if we had Dwarf Fortress installed. And then I would just do a sim link back and forth. That way it kind of gets all my saves and I can put whatever I want over here and it would sync to all the devices and all the drives. So you can see Dwarf Fortress there. Let's go ahead and install Dwarf Fortress over here. We'll click it, hit install, we'll hit play. All right, you can see I don't have any worlds. It just says create new world, mods, and that type of thing. Well, that doesn't do me any good. Let's go ahead and quit that. And we're gonna grab uh, our saves right here and link that over to our Dwarf Fortress. Quick 
example of a sim link in Windows would be this. And I'm just going to right click, manage, browse local files. And then we can see the save folder here with nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is just delete this. And we're going to copy this entire directory. Let's just do a terminal as admin. We'll type CMD. We'll paste that in and hit enter. And then it says symbolic link created. And if we look back here under Dwarf Fortress, we got that. Under the regular Dwarf Fortress, you can see all our saves are there. So now we've established that link. We'll close this out. We'll hit play again. And we'll continue this. We got three active saves. You can already see it's pulling in all those saves, which is great. But I'm gonna make a little change and then we're gonna watch the sync happen the reverse way. So we have my little dwarf colony here. Let's see all these guys, they're pretty happy for the most part. A little happy bunch. Yeah, cool. All right, we'll pretend like we did something. We'll just hit pause, let them do something, save it. Well, let's save and return to title screen, save this timeline. All right, as it's saving those sets, I'm gonna come back over to here and we should see some syncing happening back and forth from Windows 10 VM over into the games folder. And there we go, preparing to sync. Happened really quick <laughs> and you just, if you blink, you might miss it. That's how fast that local sync is. But, oh, I absolutely love it for some of these games that are a little bit harder to manage. And that's going to do it for local syncing. Simlinks was kind of thrown in there. I know that's a little advanced, but I'm trying to get a little deeper dive in some of my videos, try and throw a couple things at folks to just teach them something new. And that's what I'm always trying to do with my videos. I know sometimes it's can be a little bit of a snore fest and my retention's going to suffer for doing this, but I don't care. We're just going to keep plowing forward. I really want to expand knowledge bases and do deeper dives on things and hopefully something new. Let me know if you guys like this format. It's something I'm kind of trying uh, this year just to try and uh, teach people more things instead of just kind of covering more of the surface level stuff that you see all over YouTube. And with that, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.